John, appreciate everybody coming out to join us here on Monday. Uh, quick recap of the Clemson game, then I will move on to the Eastern Kentucky game. Um, really enjoyed the uh, the game. I really enjoyed the pregame talk with Coach Sweeney. Uh, we had a, uh, a good opportunity to catch up on the last couple of months since we didn't catch up at the Fisher DeBerry Foundation uh, dinner. We uh, really enjoyed things that he had to say. We were um, uh, going back and forth a little bit about uh, what the last three or four months have been like, and it's uh, very similar for the both both of us. And uh, it was uh, both of us were very grateful to be there. Uh, he has a very good, outstanding football team. I think they've got a chance to win the national championship. Of course, uh, he's got a lot of the pieces in place. Uh, we were out of the game for the uh, pretty quickly into the first half, and uh, I, I felt like uh, there was a lot more that we could get out of that football game. And uh, we continued to move forward with the game as it was scheduled to play 60 minutes worth. And I thought that was important from a lot of standpoint. Um, it was good for our younger guys. It was a message sent to the team. Um, I thought there was a lot of valuable uh, game time that we could have gotten, as well as uh, Clemson. I think even uh, second and third teams can get a lot of reps out of it and can gain a lot from one of the games that, from this particular game. We. Um, we didn't fight. We didn't uh, stop fighting in, all the way through the end. I thought we we had a no quit attitude, and I thought that was important. I wanted to see what we were made of. So early on in the year, that you don't always know exactly what you're made of. Uh, we fought to the end of the South Florida game. We fought to the end of the Clemson game, and that's really all you want to see as a uh, as a head football coach. Um, and really, the opinion that matters is uh, is ours, and um, it was an important one. We've moved on to the Eastern Kentucky game. Uh, both these two teams, them and us, we've had a similar start to the season. We've had to play uh, a group of five team and a uh, BCS team. Uh, very challenging way to start the year off, but uh, that's just kind of the way that the, the schedule has been laid out for us uh, in this unique year for us. So uh, both teams, I think, are looking to, are probably hungry to get a win, and uh, both teams are excited to probably get out there and face an FCS opponent. Uh, I do know that we are. It is, uh, it is a big weekend for our seniors. It is ring weekend. It is an opportunity for them to celebrate their accomplishments uh, at the Citadel as well as on the football field. So we're looking forward to that. And it will be our only home game this year. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's exciting just in and of itself. Uh, we're looking forward to a great Saturday. And we're uh, looking forward to get everybody out there and, and watch us play and play in front of our fans. Questions? Hey, over at WCBD. Uh, you know, just talking about the fans coming into that and, you know, having the atmosphere back to the Citadel Bulldogs, you know, what's it going to mean for you guys to be able to have a home game, unfortunately, a short season, but maybe have the fans back in the stands and kind of be home, you know, for the crowd? Yeah, we, you know, especially in a year where you weren't expecting a home game, I thought that uh, it was important for us to have this home game and, uh, particularly this weekend being able to have a ring weekend on this weekend is um, it's an opportunity for you know not just the fans but the parents of our players who happen to be fans as well uh, to be able to come out and, and enjoy uh, what would be uh, you know hopefully a fairly or close to a normal uh, Saturday in the fall as we would get. Now, you guys obviously, like I said, a shortened season, but just kind of tell me, you know, coming off that game against Clemson, you know, you guys feeling a, you know, a little bit better about being home and, you know, seeing that team and now getting the chance to kind of correct some things and get ready for East Kentucky? Yeah, well, you, you certainly have a, a good indication of where you're at uh, when you play those two teams is uh, a South Florida team that was very athletic and then a Clemson team that was athletic deep um, and uh, really have a legitimate chance of playing in the national championship. So I, I thought we've, got, we've had two really good tests. It's not like we were playing um, lesser teams than us. So I, I think that uh, we've got a, a good opportunity to be able to go out there and um, get a better feel for where we're at at this time and um, hopefully get a win against an FCS opponent. Hey, Frank, this is Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Um, regardless of the opponent, would you say the Bulldogs have played it to your standards so far uh, as far as playing clean football and executing the way you'd like to see, or is there room for improvement? No, absolutely not. You know, um, 
defensively, I think at times we've played uh, to that standard, and I think we're getting closer there defensively. Uh, offensively, I, I think we're playing hard out there, but there, I, we've made some dumb mistakes out there. Uh, some of them have been forced, some have been unforced. The unforced errors are the ones that get you. Uh, we had two personal foul penalties against South Florida. We had six false start penalties against Clemson. Uh, I get it. Sometimes I understand that you're trying to get a jump on it. You're trying to get the excitement out. Um, every step matters in that, but uh, we still have got to be able to remain, you know, in um, in the the ability to be able to move the football and get first downs. When we get to first and fifteen or uh, first and twenty five, it's it's can be very challenging for us. You said the uh, the decision to play sixty minutes sent a message to your team. What what message do you hope gets through? Well, I even I told him at halftime that uh, this was conveyed to me by the officials. Um, in no way was uh, were we going to be able to um, shrink this game at all. We weren't going to go to 10-minute quarters. We weren't going to run the clock at all. Um, as long as we can field a football team out there, we're going to field a football team out there. Uh, if anything, is it needs to say something about who we are. Uh, we have a contract to play a 60-minute football game, and that's what we're going to do to the best of our ability. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It is we need to live up to our end of that, um, and we need to get better from it. it is uh, there's no easy way out. There's no easy way out at the Citadel. There's no easy way to uh, get around certain situations. Um, if we're going to lose, we're going to lose. It doesn't matter if I lose by 100. If I lose by 50, it doesn't matter. It's still a loss. Uh, we'll learn something from it, and we're going to move on. All right. Thanks, Brent. Yes, sir. Uh, Coach, this is Jim Tyre from the EKU Radio Crew. Hey, Jim. I uh, just uh, wanted to get your thoughts, just comment shortly if you would, on what you see on film with Eastern's offense. Where do you think their weapons lie? Well, uh, the running back is a weapon. He's big. He's strong. Uh, he moves the pile. I think he's uh, he can be dangerous at times out there. They've also got some very big wide receivers, some wide receivers that um, would rival some of the best wide receivers in our conference right now. Uh, usually with the spread teams, you get more of the, the smaller, faster, quicker. These guys go up for it. They've got some... Uh, some uh, uh, transfers on their roster that I think uh, really could be deadly weapons for them. It's hard to tell when they play a very good Marshall team and a very good West Virginia team. Uh, just like us, it's hard to tell where you're at, you know, um, but we think that they're pretty good. Hey, Coach, uh, I'm sorry, uh, just one other short thought. Uh, how have the opt-outs changed the way you approach the season this season? Well, naturally, they've had to uh, at least change uh, some of your thought process. You went from being very experienced and skillful at the A-backs to the B-backs, about to being very young um, and not being able to do as much. So you've got to be a little bit more simple in your game plan when it comes to the A-back. And then just the way that the B-back situation is sorted out with having two injuries against South Florida, uh, you've had to be a little bit more simplistic in your approach at that position as well. But there's still certainly things that we can do. Uh, we hope to get Clay back this week. And uh, we should have, I think there's a good chance that we'll get Logan back this week as well. So between the A-back spot and the, uh, the B-back spot, yeah, it's limited us a little bit. But, uh, you know, we've got to press forward. Hey, hey Brent. Yes. I'm sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. It was about Jalen Adams. Yeah, Jalen Adams, what role do you see for him uh, this week? And, and at Army, do you have an eye towards three as you think about how to use him? You know, there is a. Um we discussed it a little bit is giving him his first test you know he was there in the spring he had the opportunity in the spring uh, being that he's the backup quarterback right now I think uh, we've got to start to work him in a little bit more get him some more comfortability in some of these games he's proven that he can do it and it was uh, he did a good job I think of getting himself out of some tight situations against Clemson late in the day uh, we've got to understand uh, what the package is going to be with him in there it may be a watered down version of it until he gets comfortable with the entire package but um, he brings a dynamic level to the uh, quarterback position we'd like to settle him down a little bit in the past game and uh, find a way to get him some you know easy targets and some easy throws out there but no uh, certainly there is a there is an offense that we can put together with him in the game uh, without losing too much of what we traditionally do hey coach it's Greg over at ABC4 when you open this schedule together how important was it to make sure you at least got one home game here at Johnson A. Good 
get the new turf out there and be able to give your players the opportunity to once the ball be able to run out there on their home stadium? Well, I know this. It was very important to General Walters, and it's very important to Mike Capasio that we get a home game, and we had to do what we could do to be able to find one. There's not many FCS teams out there playing. Therefore, there weren't that many out there looking to play. Um, in order for us to pull this off, it's a tremendous feat uh, on the administration level, and it's com tremendous commitment to our players. Um, on this particular weekend, making it ring weekend to be as special as we possibly could, um, everything that we're trying to do right now at this point um, is to uh, – give ourselves the best opportunity to make it feel um, like a normal traditional year for our seniors that are going out in their last possible year here. Will there be any sort of senior day celebrations or anything based on the, you know, I know there's still plans to play in the spring, but just where this is all at right now, we know a lot of high schools are doing senior nights in their first games, uh, stuff like that. Is, is there any plans where you'll honor those kids who are finishing their collegiate careers um, and, and do you know what the situation is going to be like you know crowd wise as well what the energy will be like around the city too no, I, I don't. Um, I, I know about what the capacity is going to be. I know about how many core members are going to be there. Uh, we will not be doing a senior day. We will be holding out for the spring for that um, in the hopes that we do have a full home slate of conference games here. But uh, I don't think that uh, the atmosphere, um, you know, it, it'll probably be a little bit different. But uh, shoot, when you go to Clemson, that was completely different up there than we had been there the last time. Uh, but at this point, is uh, we've played in stadiums with zero. We've played in stadiums with about 20,000, uh, you know, and then now we're going to play in a stadium with a few thousand in it as well. So uh, we're gonna, it's going to run the gamut for us. Uh, the most important thing is that we're playing at home. We'll get an opportunity to play uh, in front of our home fans at least once this year going into the spring. Hey, Cody, Cody. Live five here. Uh, going back to the turf question real quick, you guys are going to be playing on turf for the first time. Uh, any advantage or disadvantage instead of playing on grass? Well, I think since we do practice on turf and we have practiced down there on that particular turf a couple of times, I think it does give us some sort of an advantage. Um, I don't know that it's a, it's an overwhelming advantage, but it is nice. And I, I do tell the players leading up into those two grass games, uh, you have to go out there in pregame and feel what it feels like underneath your feet. You've got to get your feet back underneath you because it is different. Uh, you've got to have a good understanding of where your feet need to be on all your breaks and all your cuts. Uh, with the turf, it's a little bit more forgiving in that. It's not quite as slick or giving. Uh, we did have a lot of rain in the last two games, so the turf was a little bit loose in spots. Uh, hopefully we won't get any more rain or anything that's going to make the, the, our, um, our synthetic turf field a, a slick surface. So I think we're going to be okay. Um, but there, I think there will be some sort of an advantage out there. Not, not particularly big. I know EKU plays on turf as well, so um, it could be all negated anyway. Hey, Brian, this is Jeff again. Hey, Jeff. I, I, know, you, I know you're just trying to win a game, but how eager or how important is it for you to hear something from the SOCON soon about spring so you can uh, start thinking ahead toward what that month is going to look like? Well, I think the most important thing is just trying to put together a schedule and see what that looks like. Um, if they put together a schedule and they have one out here in the next uh, couple of days or weeks here, uh, I think it's uh, it puts some legitimacy in the spring. Uh, it allows our guys to be able to prepare their minds to get, get another season underway here in a couple more months. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think a little bit of progress in that department. I think the MEAC has come out with a schedule. Um, some other conferences may have as well. So it just kind of feels like you're moving forward a little bit with a spring schedule. Coach, Jim Tyree, KDK's uh, radio crew, um, 18 penalties, two games, is that something you've addressed in practice? <laughs> we did. We addressed it yesterday. Uh, after the first game, I, I, I chalked it up to first game kind of a deal. Um, yesterday, uh, we, had to, um, we had to address it because it was becoming a little bit more of a uh, – problematic issue for especially on the offensive side uh, and as I said those penalties are um, really the, the ones that, that drive you crazy as a football coach are the ones that you can control the uh, the false starts and the offsides I think we had two on offense and about seven or eight on, excuse me two on defense and about seven or eight on offense which um, one on special teams which is uh, completely inexcusable uh, we've got to really control those um, we're going to get our chop block calls we're going to get our holding calls in there those kind of things are going to take place but uh, the false starts the offsides those things that we can handle Coach, has, 
No, he has. Um, he's a big, long body in there. He's got some uh, ball skills in there that we think we can get him as a big target. Uh, I like him as the, in that spot. That spot can be an extra tackle spot. It could be a tight end spot for us. We've used it in a lot of different ways. It gives us a little bit more dimension in our uh, in our offense. It gives us a little bit more dimension in our uh, goal line packages. So I think there's a lot of things that we could do there. Um, it was a little bit of a of a personnel issue early on in the year when we didn't have as many tackles. We got two more tackles back, so we ended up with uh, a little bit more of a spot that we can move some guy, somebody from a tackle to a tight end spot that help us out. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.